you have questions about some of these terrific model simulations you might ask. Um, okay, the next speaker is Dr. Bill Easterlin. We know him because he's still our boss, but if this <laughs> he was our boss. <laughs> Our paychecks are coming from. Are <laughs> they still come from? Okay, sort of. Right. Summertime. Summertime. Yes. Summer pay. Summer got it. Got it. <laughs> I know <But>, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Bill Easterlin is the head of the Geoscience Directorate at the National Science Foundation. He was our last dean in the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences, and he's a friend for many across the various uh, departments and even outside of the college. Um, he's a professor of geography. You're, you're still here, I know that. <laughs> I think I see your picture uh, on the website in terms of uh, still being a faculty member. I'm certain you have some students, right? Okay, so good, it's good. All right, so he's a professor of geography at Penn, at Penn State for many years. And he's internationally recognized uh, for his expertise in climate change and how it impacts uh, the Earth's food supply. Um, Dr. Ushelin was trained as an economic geographer and climatologist at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, hurricane maybe in, I don't know, seven, eight days, that area being impacted. And he served as one of the convening lead authors on IPCC fourth report. And we're really glad to have Bill here, uh, not just in terms of seeing an old face again, a good friend, but also um, sending us a message from the National Science Foundation. So, Dr. Sherman, it's all yours. Do you need the mic? Just this. Oh. Well, thank you, Greg. And it is unbelievably good to be back, and especially um, for this occasion. Um, Warren and Mary have been a special part of my life for um, on and off uh, 30, 35 years. And so uh, I want to say a few things um, about my experiences with uh, Warren and Mary in, in just a few minutes. But um, I do want to discharge uh, my duties as uh, first assistant director of uh, the Geosciences Directorate from NSF. And on behalf of Director France Cordova read a, uh, a letter that she wrote uh, for this, this occasion. So please uh, bear with me while I uh, read this letter. <coughs> Image uh, France Cordova standing here. Um, <laughs> Dear Warren, on behalf of the National Science Foundation, I want to congratulate and thank you for your long standing contribution to the U.S. science community. I'm pleased that Penn State has chosen to recognize you with the Warren Washington Legacy Symposium, a scientific journey in climate modeling, research, and science policy. It is a fitting tribute to your distinguished career. As a former member of the National Science Board and the board chair, you are keenly aware of the important role the Foundation plays in benefiting the nation through discovering new scientific knowledge, driving innovation, and inspiring young people to become scientists and engineers. Through sustained investment in long-term, curiosity-driven research and world-class research infrastructure, NSF positions the nation at the forefront of global science and technology. During your 12 years with the National Science Board from 1994 to 2006, you helped approve projects which are now yielding discoveries of tremendous impact. This work has led to, among other things, a national facility for sustained ecological measurements, which many of us in the room know as NEON. The discovery of gravitational waves and neutrinos from uh, bays of blazars, thus initiating the era of multi-messenger astronomy, and the development of information technologies that have changed 
the nature of communications and commerce globally. Today is a celebration of your career and on behalf of the agency, I want to thank you for your service to the nation and your contributions to the National Science Foundation. You continue to make a tremendous difference, Warren. I wish you and your family all the best on this special day that celebrates your contributions and influence. Sincerely, France A. Cordoba, Director, NSF. I'd like to present this. Dean and uh, now assistant director, I cannot leave a open mic uh, with minutes remaining uh, unattended. <laughs> so I want to just say a few words about how my career has interwoven with uh, with both Warren and Mary, and um, and I want to just take a few moments to reflect on just how influential he has been to me and to, to my colleagues, um, generations of colleagues, in fact, um, and, and do this first as, um, as a researcher. And as uh, Greg mentioned, uh, my area of science was, and still is, um, climate change and, uh, and food security. I want to talk about my uh, experiences then as uh, dean of this magnificent college here. And then finally, um, my experiences uh, at NSF uh, that have revealed to me the, the high impact of uh, Warren's uh, time served on the National Science Board that is living out today. So I uh, will read from a script, but as my staff, former staff uh, here knows, I'm prone to going off script and going rogue, and I'll try to keep that to a minimum because I know Greg is trying to make up time here. So, my research career began in the 1980s, and it really started down the path that brings me to here when I helped with the drafting of a 1983 National Academy uh, report entitled Changing Climate. I was a fresh out of uh, PhD uh, Mellon Fellow with the Board on Atmospheric Sciences and Climate, who found himself one day uh, in graduate school writing a dissertation by day and playing pickup basketball for hours at night. And the next day at the academy, I find myself rubbing shoulders with people like Joe Smagorensky, Vern Sumi, Roger Revelle, our own John Dutton. Is John here, by the way? Okay, uh, former dean, and, uh, and Warren Washington. That report was one of the first and perhaps most seminal in a series of prominent NAS studies that uh, presented a strong and comprehensive case for earth warming and the protagonist being the release of radiatively active trace gases into the atmosphere by us, by human activity. In many ways, the 80s was the golden era of the GCM. It held amazing allure, still does, uh, but at that time it was, um, it was a, um, a, a, just a, a really um, interesting high energy uh, moment in the history of climate change science. It was a day when general circulation modelers were the daring swashbucklers of the uh, climate research community. It seemed that the scientific community and the public couldn't get enough of what the latest model runs forewarned for Midwestern summers or the fate of alpine and continental gl glaciers. Um, Jim Hansen, um, Suki Manabe, Larry Gates, Bert Sem Sempner, and yes, Warren, were, were truly um, household names, um, often 
the, the, the subjects of, uh, of articles in um, newspapers globally, and uh, still are. But with Warren, climate modeling was just about the perfect profession for a man who had a job as a car repo man in his younger days, right? <laughs> He was a repo man. <laughs> it takes that kind of um, just internal strength to be able to, um, to, 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 to run these models, is the way I see it. It was the Wild West days of uh, climate change science, when computers were at the front end of Moore's Law, and uh, startling breakthroughs happened often, and the modelers were the heroes in the white hats. Yet, in those days, the models and the modelers, and now I'm speaking about the 70s and 80s, um, and maybe even into the early 90s, uh, were, were, were seen as research instruments. Um, and the modelers really mostly kept to themselves. Um, so where am I going with this? The reason I spent all this time setting up this story is that Warren was different in many ways from the other modelers. Warren saw before others the opportunity to pay some attention to better understanding the so what side of climate change. So what if the climate warms and precipitation patterns change? I mean, it, it was an intellectually interesting question back in the 70s and 80s. But there really weren't that many people um, who were rigorously looking into what that so what meant for, for the Earth's people. So what if climate warms and precipitation patterns change? With Warren's help, and joined by a few others, an almost galactic shift in climate and climate-related scientific communities was ushered in that it trained a remarkable range of disciplines and research methods that enabled us to shed light on what we might expect from climate change for food production, for water resources, for human health, fisheries and forestry, things that ecosystem services upon which we critically depend. That was the so what and it still remains an important question in climate change science. So if you told me back in 1983 that I could make a career out of focusing my research on anthropogenic climate change, I would have laughed. We thought it was a passing fa fancy, uh, a, a fad. But we're still here, and the history is rich, and Warren helped make that history happen. Warren's special role in making general circulation models accessible to the so-called impact disciplines was to encourage and mentor a cohort of young scientists who could assimilate the climate model sim simulations and draw powerful insights into the response of those critical ecosystem services. Names like Linda Burns, Filippo Giorgi, Brian O'Neill are just a few of the products of Warren's mentoring who are now themselves leaders in their fields. I'll even number myself as part of that cohort. I once heard Linda Mern say that Warren could land at any international airport in the world and be within 25 kilometers of a protege or former uh, co-worker for whom he mentored and who drew inspiration from, in their own work from him. So let me just pivot a bit and reflect on my experience with, with Warren and Mary uh, when I became Dean of the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences here. One of the truly incomparable perks that went along with being dean of this college was the opportunity to befriend and frequently visit many of the alumni who stayed closely connected to Penn State and to the college. Because it is the generosity of those alumni is what they allows 
subsequent generations of students to pursue their dreams and to become graduates of this college. But some of our alumni, and Warren is in this crowd with, with, with Mary, are driven not just to help subsequent generations of students achieve their dreams, a high enough uh, ideal, but specifically to help minority students and students from other underrepresented groups receive what is often, very often, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to change their lives by getting a, uh, a college degree. In my new role as Assistant Director of the Geosciences Directorate at NSF, I'm now confronted with the fact that the Earth Sciences are among the most, or I should say least, diverse set of disciplines in the American Academy. Warren and his wonderful wife walk the walk, donating their time and treasure to helping establish a new face of the Earth Sciences, a face that reflects the composition of American society. Finally, now that I'm at NSF, I want to reflect on Warren's many contributions to the nation's research enterprise. You've heard mention made um, several times of Warren's specific, unique, and magnificent contributions to the science of the way the climate works. But he's done far more to the nation than that even though that is an amazing contribution in its own right. Warren was a member of uh, the prestigious National Science Board, as France said, from 96 to 2006, 94 to 2006. He chaired the board. That was not mentioned. He was the chair of the National Science Board. The National Science Board, just uh, for those who don't know, is the governing body for the National Science Foundation. And it has, it has binding decision-making authority over the programs of the nation's uh, research funded by NSF. He coaxed the board when he was at the helm. He coaxed the NSF directors and assistant directors and program managers into taking a major turn toward interdisciplinary science. NSF has always been the home of curiosity-driven, deep disciplinary research. Its dabbling early in interdisciplinary research has now become a serious commitment by the Foundation. The emergence of biocomplexity and complex systems science in that time set NSF on a course that now more than 10 years later has led us to the genesis of what we are now in, the era of the NSF 10 big ideas. Now there isn't time for me to introduce the 10 big ideas. They're in the literature, but pay attention to them because they will be the the, the largest uh, investment area for NSF in the future. That's, that's just a little commercial on the side. These are massive challenges and they require interdisciplinary cooperation to solve. Um, I'll, I'll just mention one that is of direct relevance here and that is navigating the new Arctic, understanding the Arctic as a complex system. So they think of Warren when you see something about the big ideas that you might want to pursue because those ideas are the legacy of the thinking that Warren led in his time as the chair of the National Science Board. So Warren, on behalf of climate scientists everywhere, the students, faculty, and alumni of Penn State's College of Earth and Mineral Sciences, and the people of this great nation, I thank you and Mary for your remarkable contributions and for a remarkable, and I hope it was for you, a fulfilling career as a scientist, a statesman, and a person. Thank you, Warren.